Well, usually I do my interviews by sending the interviewee a bunch of questions and have them answered. And then I put them on my blog, but Bob said he wanted to do a, a live interview. So here we are with Bob Ostrom live. Well, not live because it'll be recorded, but um, well, it's live for us. It's live for us. <laughs> and he's going to be talking about his career path. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Bob? Okay, so I am a children's illustrator. Um, my work is, uh, I guess, what you would call cartoony. I've been doing um, children's illustration now for about uh, a little over 20 years, I think. Um, so I got started a while ago. It was one of those things where um, I didn't really intentionally uh, get into um, doing freelance illustration. I, I had lost a job and I just, I, I sort of like, oh, what do I do now? You know, so I started looking around for work and, and it just started to build and build. And eventually I said, well, I'm going to stick with this. And if I'm going to stick with this, I'm going to do something that I love to do, which is illustrate for children. So it took me a little while uh, to get into that market. Um, but I found that the best way to get into that market for me um, was to do uh, licensing work. Right. So when I talk and about, what did you license for? Right. So when I talk about licensing, I'm talking about things like, um, you know, Rugrats and, and <coughs> Magic School Bus, that kind of stuff. So um, my first licensing job was uh, through Parker Brothers up in Bever Beverly, Massachusetts. I used to live up in Boston for a number of years. And so uh, they really got the whole thing started for me. And they started me with a job uh, on Little Mermaid. And uh, when I first talked to the creative director there, his name was Steven. He said, Bob, I think you can do this stuff. You'll, you'll love it. It'd be great. And I was terrified. I was like, Disney, they got me doing Disney. <laughs> I was like, you know, that was, that was what I was saying on the inside, on the, on the outside. I was like, got you covered. So, um, <laughs> I went home and I was just like, how am I going to do this? You know? So, um, so, so somehow I managed to get it done and, um, after doing that, uh, it started to really open doors. You know, there's one thing about uh, working on licensing, and that is that everybody recognizes it. So um, when they see that, they understand um, that it's a lot of work and, you know, that, that you can handle doing other type of work. So um, I, I think shortly after that, it might, it might have been uh, within the next year or so, I found a rep out of New York City, and he did exclusively licensing. And so when he... Uh, saw that I had done Disney, he was very impressed. And he said, well, we've got a lot of other licenses. What kind of stuff would you like to work on? And, you know, I was just a kid at that point. And I was just like, give me everything, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my first uh, official children's book was done for um, the, uh, what was, oh, the Biker Mice from Mars, which came out shortly after Ninja Turtles. And it was a very short lived property. Uh, I did two books and I remember, um, not understanding, um, you know, how deadlines worked. I just thought if I took everything, you know, that they offered, then I could make more money. Right. But, uh, halfway through the project, I realized that I was in way over my head. So, um, that was when we, when I was first introduced to outsourcing. And so they paired me up with another artist and the two of us worked together on that project, uh, to finish it up. So, uh, I did the main, uh, Part of the project which was doing the uh color illustrations for the two books and then we had two coloring books and we outsourced a lot of that work the so, end <laughs> so it, when, when you're um working with the the licensing agent you mm -hmm. did properties where you didn't develop the characters where you were basically just redrawing other people's characters that's right so that's when you talk about licensing really what we're talking about is something that has been has been licensed right so um, uh, a licensed property would be something where a, a whole company is behind it disney is a great example so the little mermaid was a licensed property uh, and i did a ton of those i did um, uh, little mermaid i did uh, berenstein bears i did dr seuss uh, Magic School Bus, Rugrats, uh, Wild Thornberries. I mean, there was a whole bunch of them. And, and each time that you work on a property, what you really need to do is be able to create uh, artwork that is indistinguishable from the original, uh, what the original uh, person created. So everybody who works on that property uh, has to have um, 
artwork that blends seamlessly with all the other work, artwork that that uh, has been done before that. And so, you know, as you start to work in licensing, a funny thing happens. Um, it's kind of like um, uh, it's kind of have you ever have you ever known twins? Right. And so like when you first see twins, you're like, you can't tell them apart. But after a while, you get to know them and you can kind of see the differences, the, the very subtle differences between them. And so uh, when I used to work in licensing, um, I would go and, and I would see the books on the shelves and I could kind of start to pick out the artists. I would say, oh, that's my friend Mark. I can tell his work. You know, he has a certain flair to it. And even though it was Disney, Disney's work, I could always kind of spot, you know, the different artists hand in that work. Um, but those those differences are so subtle that, um, you know, most people don't recognize them. And that's what they count on um, when they're, you know, when they hire people to do licensed art. So part of the process was to create um, sample work. So they would see that you could handle it before they actually gave you the job. So there was a lot of, um, oh, wh wh how could, <laughs> there's was, there was a lot of heartache in that job. <laughs> Because sometimes you'd get those things and other times you'd just be like, oh, I cannot make this work, you know. So I can remember a time when I was working uh, with the Berenstein Bears and, and I, I got the job and I was so excited and I started working on it. And it looked so, it looked so simple. But when I sat down to do it, I just couldn't get it right, you know. Um, and I remember uh, calling my rep and I was very upset. And I said, I'm not going to make this deadline done. I just, I can't handle this. You know, and he's like, okay, don't worry. We'll take care of everything. And the next thing you know, I'm on the phone with Stan Berenstein and he's telling tell me how to do the art. <laughs> it's not the way you really want to beat a guy, but it was a lot of fun. It was a great project. And, you know, all those projects were, but um, the work is really uh, tedious. It, it just, it takes everything to get those things just right. You know, and so eventually um, I wanted to start to explore some of my own style. And so, um, about 10 years after I started doing that, I started looking into finding a new rep. And, and now I have a rep down in Philadelphia. Her name is Deborah Wolf. And uh, the work that we do together is mainly um, my own style. You know, I do a little bit of licensing with her here and there, but mostly I do my own work. So w when you're licensing, you said that, you know, you moved on from that to your own style. Mm -hmm. um, do you find, did you find that while you were licensing, you lost your style and you had to, to find out who you were again? Not really. In, in fact, it was, it was sort of the opposite. You know, um, one of the things that licensing does is it really, um, it forces you um, to adapt to a new way of creating art. So, um, you know, when I work on my own stuff, um, I have a certain look that I go with. And that, it's sort of a natural thing that that's, you know, that's almost innate. But um, I also like to push the boundaries a little bit. I like to find new styles when I'm working on projects and try to find things that are interesting. And so when I work on licensed projects, um, it sort of forces me to do things that are uncomfortable. It's almost like having to learn how to uh, draw a whole new style. I don't know if you remember, you know, back in the days of art school, but, um, you know, when I was in art school, we had a lot of foundation courses that made me do like what you mean in the last century <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago for me <laughs> but i remember uh being very uncomfortable in some of those classes because these were not ways that i typically thought of creating artwork you know i would do my art but but i would be like you know uh, this doesn't feel natural it doesn't feel right but after a while you know you start to learn from those and and then you you add that to your your into your repertoire it's almost becomes a new tool for you and so it, it really helps you expand and broaden your base. And so when it, when it came time to go back to my own art, uh, not only was I familiar with how, you know, uh, Stan Berenstein does his uh, watercolor, but, you know, I also knew how to uh, do Disney style line art and those kind of things. So I tried to build that, some of that uh, into my style as well, you know? So if you look at the, the line art that I do right now, um, you know, after uh, being, you know, browbeaten by Disney to create perfect lines, you know, that now I can't help but to create that kind of line work uh, when I do my own stuff, you know, and so, um, you know, for many years, um, I really focused on, you know, making things as slick as possible, because that was part of the job. Uh, when I first started out using an airbrush, you know, you wanted to make sure that it was seamless. And so along came Photoshop and Illustrator and wow, you know, now you can do this stuff perfectly. Um, but then, you know, as I start to develop a little bit further, now I want things to look a little bit more like they're done by hand again. You know, so 
Um, I look at some new styles using uh, Photoshop and, you know, an illustrator and, and creating that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you know, so to answer your question, um, I, I never really lost my style. I always had, um, you know, projects that I was working on along with those licensed uh projects to, you know, to kind of keep me going. So there was kind of a, there's always kind of a mix in there, you know. What's your favorite project that you worked on? Um, I would say at this point, you know, I have a lot of them and, and they're all kind of my babies. So it's hard to pick, you know, like you, 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 <laughs> You work you on one and you just dump. Favorite child. I yeah, know. yeah. I mean, you just dump your heart, and, and I, I, I do personally. I just dump my heart and soul into every project that I work on, whether you know they, they're paying me a million dollars or they're paying me ten dollars. I can't help it. That's just the way I work. So, um, but one of the ones that stands out for me was uh, the Herbie Bear project. It was it, the official name for it is Herbster Readers, um, but I know it as Herbie Bear, um, and we worked on. Or I, the reason I say we is because I teamed up with another artist to get them done, but. Um, we worked on those a couple of years ago, and it was a it was an amazing uh, project, um, you know, from start to finish. And the the you know the people that I worked with were great, but there was just so much work on that project that I had to really uh, figure out a whole new way, you know, how to handle uh, working on things. And so um, again, I went back to you know sub subbing out some of the work. I, I worked with a an artist. Um, in Las Vegas. His name is Richard Carbajal, and he helped me get through all that work. And uh, together we created, I think, um, we did two, we actually, we did the, the series two years in a row. There were 25 books. And so for the 25 books, I think each year we created over 700 pieces of art. Um, so, you know, there was That's a lot hard to keep track of. Um, <laughs> it is, it really is. And it, it was just so demanding. I remember um, when I first signed on with the project, uh, it, it, it turned out, you know, my rep called me up and she she started to talk about it. And I had done series before, but never that much work. And so she said, um, here's what you got. Are you interested? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I, that's always my first response. You know, is, let's do it. <laughs> and then, fig yeah, figure out how to get it done later. And then I remember, uh, you know, that having that project and just sitting down and looking at the, the, the sheer volume of it. You know, how am I going to do 800 pieces of art? in, you know, a little over six months, you know, and I just, I, I, I remember, you know, one night just walking out in my backyard and just, and, and thinking like, there's no way I could do this. It just can't happen, you know? And so um, I was like, well, what am I going to do? I've already signed the contract. They've already paid me, you know, a little bit of money to get rolling on this thing. I got to figure it out. So, you know, I called my rep and I said, I, I need help. And so she said, you know, she was great about the whole thing. You know, I was, I was, I was a little nervous about it. And by a little, I mean a lot. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so she was great. She said, you know, we're going to team you up with another artist. You need, and she, she refers to him as elves, you know, so we're going to get you some elves. And, and so um, that was how I met um, uh, my friend Richard. And uh, he was just amazing. You know, he said, don't worry about a thing. We're going to get it all done. We can get it all done. And, and that's exactly what I needed at the time. I, you know, somebody to kind of kind of reel me in, you know, so, so we just sat down, we figured out how to do it. Okay. Here's how much art we need to create. We have 800 pieces. We have this much amount of time to do it in. Uh, how many can we do in a day? And so we got to the point where we were so efficient with these that we were actually able to create an entire book in about a week and a half. And that's 32 pages of illustration. Were you working illustration. traditionally or digitally with these? Uh, we were working digitally. So the way that I do it is I sit down with the manuscript and I get out a, a a pad of paper or a, a, I'm looking at the reason I'm looking around because I wanted to show you, but I don't have happen to have it here with me right now, but I'll get out a, um, a block of paper, you know, uh, just a ream of paper, I, I stick it in a clipboard and I start going through all my sketches. So I do everything really loose at first. I'll use just a regular Sharpie marker and just, you know, I practically draw, you know, like I'm, I'm uh, drawn with a stick and that, that just helps me place my, my characters and get everything in position. Uh, and once I have that, uh, those those kind of things set up, then I go back and refine. And so so my part of the the project was to get all the drawing down. And once I got the drawing down, then I would uh, tighten them up, send them send them off, and have them approved, and then just jump right onto the next book. And so each time I would have one of those done, uh, it would just you know feed into the process. And our process was that I would do the sketches, and then Richard would do the ink line and the color. And so he would do that using a combination of Photoshop and Illustrator. 
And, you know, after I finished up my, doing my sketches, then I would join him. So he would start with ink and then I would come in and I would help him with color. And then we would just go through every single book like that. And there was 25 of them. And we managed to get it done in record time, you know. And so um, the books were very successful. The publisher loved them and they came back and they said, would you like to try to do it again? <laughs> and I was like, oh, let me catch my breath. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> But we did. We did it again. It was great. So there's there's a total of 50 of those books. And there were, you know, it was a even though it was a, a really long, uh, tedious process to get those done, um, you know, it was just thrilling because they were finally here. I was designing all my own characters, um, you know, uh, based on um, uh, manuscripts that I received from a team of writers who were just excellent. And I was really excited about it. And so when I was able to. Um, to start working on the project, I really felt like I owned that one. You know, up until then, a lot of the work that I'd done was, you know, was licensing, but never, never anything that was really truly my own characters the way that these were. You know, so we went back and forth, and the writers would look at the characters and say, "Ah, that's not quite right for this one," or "That's perfect for that one," that kind of thing. And a uh, funny thing that happened as we got towards the end of the project was that the writers um, actually. Uh, ended up living here in North Carolina, less than a half an hour away from me. I didn't find that out till the second year of the project. And so I, I had a chance to go meet them. Or actually, I met one of them. Her name was Cecilia. And she was great. It was just really fun. It was fun to work on those. So um, I've done a lot of work aimed at the, tr the trade publications. It sounds like most of your work is mass market. Have you done trade publications? Can you tell us what the difference between trade and mass market is? Um, I've done just about everything. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I, I started out doing when I first started working on my own uh, style was for uh, educational work. You know, um, <clears throat> the the you know, it, it's the projects sort of come along um, here and there and they're, they're just sort of all over the place. You know, sometimes I'll do, um, you know, a one-off, you know, where it's just a, a single book and, and I'll work for, you know, a publisher and we'll have an extended deadline that might be, you know, uh, three, four, five, six months. And then other times I'll get stuff that, you know, this mass market type of stuff, like you mentioned, uh, where we get, you know, a series of books, there might be anywhere from five to, you know, 25, and they have to be done very quickly. Um, the process is really the same for, for almost any book that I work on. You know, it starts with sketches. Um, I get the sketches approved and then, you know, we go to finished art. And so depending on how much time I have to create that art really um, dictates what I'm going to do with my style. You know, and I will have a couple of different styles that I work in, but I always make sure that whatever style that I propose to that publisher can be done uh, to the best of my ability in the amount of time that I have to work on it. So if I have only, you know, six months to do uh, 25 books, then I have to come up with a style that is doable. You know, if I were to sit down and try to do all those books in a very rendered watercolor style, there's just no way it's going to happen. And so, you know, we create a style that the publisher loves, that we love, and that can be done in that amount of time. You know, so when I have a, a, a you know, a single book with a long deadline, then I can really get in and doodle and, and add a lot of detail. But if I don't have that kind of time, then I have to make sure that I adapt to to the amount of time that I do have for my deadline. Well, you started out traditional in traditional media, seeing as like 20 years ago, there wasn't things like Photoshop and 20, 20 years ago, <laughs> it was so different. It was so different. Yeah. But you're, did it, you're do, doing digital now. Mm -hmm. How did you switch? I mean, did it happen naturally or did you have to actually think about it? Um, you know, one of the things that I do um, as an illustrator is I really I, I spend a lot of time um, learning about things. And so when I saw, um, uh, you know, my friends and, and other artists begin to work traditionally, I really I really look into it. I really dug into it. And I said, you know, is this something that is going to uh, be important for me in my future? And, and at the time, I remember, you know, talking to um a teacher of mine and he said, Oh, Bob, don't worry about it. They'll never be able to do, you know, what you can do traditionally with a computer. And I was like, that's great advice. Thanks. You know? and so I ignored it for a little while, but then I started to see it gain momentum and, and some of my customers started to ask for it. Um, and so I had a friend at the time who said, Oh, you know, if you want to get into computers, I'm, I'm selling a computer. So, 
uh, you know, if you want to buy it, I'll, you know, you can have mine. And so, uh, I bought it from him and, um, you know, I didn't have the slightest clue how to use it, but I knew that it was something that I needed to get into. And so, um, I began to, uh, do a lot of my line art, um, traditionally, and then I would scan it in and then send it into vector. And a lot of my clients were asking for that kind of thing. So I knew that if I didn't learn it, then I would lose those jobs, you know? And so, um, that was my motivation to start learning it. And then when I realized, um, how efficient it was for a lot of the stuff that I was doing, I, I started to do more and more of it. And, and suddenly there became a, a sort of a tipping point where I realized that, um, because publishing has changed so much over the years, there just isn't the same amount of time, um, for deadlines. The, the expectations that publishers have are much different now than they were 20 years ago when I was first getting started. Um, back then, you know, I would do a book and I would have, um, three or four months to do books. And incidentally, don't tell anybody, but, but a lot of them paid better back then too. <laughs> but, I don't think it's a big secret. Yeah. But, you know, but, but because it was so much more labor intensive, you know, and so you would sit down and, and I, I remember doing a lot of my work with watercolor and I remember it taking just a tremendous amount of time, you know, and then same thing with airbrush. If I was doing a book in airbrush, oh, it was just so tedious, it took so much time. And, and they, you know, if, if you had a correction, you had a week to do a correction. Now you have hours, you know, so there's just no way to keep up with it. So I, I realized that, um, you know, by switching to digital, I was really um, offering people what they were demanding, you know, and so, um, you know, just trying to keep up with everything. And there, I, I know that um, things are going to change again, you know, now that we, we're getting into um, doing, uh, you know, uh, publishing for um, things like the, you know, the iPad, that kind of stuff. All of those things are going to change uh, publishing again. And so, um, you know, it, you really need to keep up with your learning. So I went out and I started to learn things like InDesign and Illustrator and Photoshop. And now I teach all those programs, you know, so. You teach um, them. Yeah, I, I started teaching a few years ago um, at Wake Tech here in uh, Raleigh. And um, I started out by teaching InDesign, uh, which at the time <laughs> I didn't really know that well. Uh, but I figured, you know, this was an opportunity. So I went I went home and I learned the program. And the first my for my first class, I was basically one lesson ahead of my students. You know, <laughs> so uh, I, you know, I, I just knew that. Um, it was important for me to, to stay ahead of that kind of, that kind of curve. And so, um, teaching is one of those things that I've always wanted to do. And, and when I had the opportunity to do, to get into teaching, uh, I jumped all over it and, and I learned those programs inside and out, you know, the things that I've been working on for years, I, I, I actually learned them so that I could teach them rather than just, you know, use them as a, as an illustrator. So are you teaching now? I am. Yes. <laughs> I'm teaching now. I teach, uh, I teach here in Raleigh. Like I, I like I mentioned, I teach at uh, wake tech and I teach, um, Photoshop illustrator and InDesign. Um, the, the, the way that we teach it is pretty straightforward there. Um, and so as I was teaching these programs, I started to mention them, um, you know, online and people, uh, would be like, oh, you know, I wish I was in the Raleigh area. I'd take your class and I'd be like, oh man, you know, I wish I could teach you. You're so far away. And so um, I started to think about that. And I was like, you know, um, teaching online just seems like the ne next natural step. You know, um, I, I wonder if I could do that. And so I started looking around a little bit and I found some people who were doing it. I said, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. You know, and, but I, I, there was a sort of a, a, a gap between how do I present this stuff online and how do I get it so that if, if I do teach online, people can actually see my desktop, they can see what I'm teaching. And so I kept looking around and I found um, an artist named Will Terry. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but um, everybody knows Will Terry. He's the best. He's just the greatest guy. <laughs> um, so so I, I found Will Terry and he was doing this and he's oh, that guy's always one step ahead of me. <laughs> so, so, so I called him up and I said, uh, or I sent him an email and I was like, well, I see, you know, I see you're teaching online. You know, and I, I asked a couple of questions and he was just so nice about it. He said, oh, he said, yeah, l let me help you out. You know, so he so we got on Skype and, and he said, this is the program I'm using. Here's how I'm doing it. And he kind of walked me through it. And I was like, oh, man, if I had known, you know, I would have been teaching last year, you know, so. Um, I really have will to thank for a lot of that stuff, um, that I'm doing now. And so, you know, after I got, after I finished talking with him, I mentioned online that I wanted to start teaching and all of a sudden I started getting, 
you know, inquiries from, from people who want to be students, you know, and they're like, Oh, I would love to, you know, take a class and this or that. So I, I, you know, I, I lean toward uh, what I knew best, which was, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, you know, so I started, uh, I'll tutor you doing that, you know, and, and so one of the things about tutoring, as opposed to um, taking a class or, you know, self-taught or whatever is you get through the material really fast and it's really efficient, you know, because as you, as you go through this stuff, you have questions, you know, and a lot of times uh, what I find is my students get frustrated. They get to a certain point they're you know, they're trying to teach themselves, they get to a certain point and then they say, you know, they don't know how to do it and they can't find the answer. Sometimes it's online, sometimes it's not, um, but they get frustrated. And so they say, they put it aside and they say, well, I'm just gonna, I'll come back to this. You know, this is something that, um, you know, maybe, um, I'll, I'll learn next week or whatever. And then a, a week turns into a month and a month turns into two months and then a year. And then suddenly they're just like, Oh yeah, well, I was going to learn Photoshop, but I couldn't. And so part of what I do is I get people past that, that hump, you know, when you get to a, a sticking point, I'm there, I'm looking over your shoulder and I'm saying, this is how it's done. And so, you know, I, I get people uh, through what they want to learn. And then also because we're doing tutoring, you can be very specific about what you want to learn. So if you want to learn a certain thing about this program, we can hone right in on that. When I'm teaching a large class, we have to kind of march through and say, okay, here's how we do step A, B, and C. Uh, but when we get into tutoring, we, we zoom right in on what you want to learn. How do I do line work? How do I do, you know, color? How do I do this? Not all my students in, in, at the college want to learn that stuff. A lot of them want to learn photo retouching. So I have to, I have to teach you know, a much broader uh, lesson when I do that. Um, but another funny thing happened when I started to teach online and, and I got these students, you know, is that they started asking me questions about how do I become an illustrator? How do I market my stuff? How do I get it out there? And so we spend a lot of time talking about that kind of information too. You know, we set up schedules. Um, we look at their portfolio. What, you know, do you have a portfolio that appeals to the type of work that you want to do? Or is it scattered and all over the place? You know, so we, we hone that. Then we look at, you know, what kind of information are you posting on your blog? Is it the kind of stuff that is going to get you hired? Is it the kind of stuff that people want to learn, you know, about you? Is it focused on the right target market? You know, a lot of times when people have a, a blog or whatever, they focus on the wrong market and then they can't understand why they're not getting work, you know? So we look at those kind of things too. And then we set up a schedule. Okay. Let's use, let's, let's figure out a way to how to use social media to get your work out there in front of the right people, you know, hit that target market and let people know that you're available because, you know, it, I, what I, one of the things I tell the students is think of your website uh, like a diner on the side of the highway, you know, and if there's no signs on it, people are just going to go sailing right by. Right. So we're going to use social media to throw up some signs and get people to come into your diner, you know? So <laughs> I know, I know that art's not a diner, but the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know art's not a diner, but that's, you know, I figure that's a pretty good analogy. Um, so if, if someone wanted to become a student with you, are you teaching classes now? Could they like email you and say, Hey, I want to take a class. Well, what I'm doing right now is um, I'm mainly taking on um, students who want to do tutoring. And so um, basically what I'll do is I'll sit down with them for an hour each week or however often they want to do it. Um, but I'm also in the process of setting up um, more structured classes, you know, like like what Will's doing. Um, and I've got a new website that's coming out really soon uh, that I've been working on in my uh, spare time. <laughs> because, you know, I just you have, have tons spare of spare time. time. <laughs> Yeah. Between, between when you're eating and, and sleeping. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, that's the way it is. You know, like I, 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 I want to do so much, but one of the things that I realized is like, okay, you can all, you know, there's only so many hours in a day. So let's focus in on uh, what you want to do. And so I was trying to set up a teaching site for kids. I wanted to set up one for adults. You know, there's, there's all kinds of things that I want to do. So finally I just said, okay, look, I gotta, I gotta cut back on some of this stuff. So right now I'm focusing on, um, doing my teaching and setting up that teaching site. Um, and then, you know, also I got to keep the lights on. So I do the illustration as well, but, um, you know, my focus right now is to get that, that site up and running. And so, um, it's going to be right now I'm going with, uh, Bob teaches uh, because I want something that's easy for people to remember, you know? And so Bob teaches art, how much simpler does it get than that? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so if somebody's interested in, in taking a class, um, 
you can you can always go back to um, my portfolio site, which is bobostrom.com. And then I have all the information on there, how to get in touch with me, how to set up a class if you want to take one. Um, basically, I ask people to just give me an idea of what their skill level is at this point, what they want to do and where they want to be in, say, six months or so. You know, And so we, we kind of um, plot out custom courses for people who want to do that kind of stuff. And so then we'll set up a schedule. OK, how often do you want to meet once a week, once a month, that kind of thing? And uh, we meet on GoToMeeting, just like you and I are doing right now. Um, and, and then I do uh, screen shares with them. And so we look at the projects that they're working on. How can we improve this? How can we make this a little bit better? Um, and, you know, I have students right now um, who are working on, uh, one of them's working on uh, getting her children's book ready for publishing. She wants to self-publish. And then I have another guy uh, who is working on um, just getting his portfolio ready to become a professional illustrator. He was formerly a programmer and now he wants to be an illustrator. And he said, how do I do it? So we're starting from the ground up and saying, okay, we're going to build your portfolio. We're going to get your website ready. We're going to get your name out there and all that kind of stuff. So in <clears throat> 10 sentences or less, if I know I tend to, I tend to kind of, to... <laughs> I tend to kind of ramble, don't I? <laughs> if, if someone is, is wanting to, to take their website and their portfolio and everything, and, and they want to actually become a working illustrator, what would you recommend to them? What would you suggest? That's a great question. And so I think, you know, what I would focus on if, you know, if illustration is what you want to do is to, um, is to look at um, a couple of things. First of all, is what you have out there um, aimed at the right target market, right? So who is your audience? Who, who's your demographic? <laughs> you got to figure that <laughs> figure out. That's the first step. Audience. Who's your demographic? Who do you, who do you want to do your work for? What, who does your work appeal to? Right. So when I do my work, I know my, my work appeals to kids. I know my work also appeals to people who like cartoons, you know, so that's my sweet spot. So when I look for a job, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people who are interested in purchasing that kind of work from me. So I focus on uh, making sure that when I deliver my message, it goes to the right people. So the first thing is uh, figure out your demographic. Who does your work appeal to? The second thing you got to look at is marketing. Um, a lot of illustrators forget about marketing. They think, well, if my work is good enough, then it's, you know, it's just going to get sold. But unfortunately, that's not the way that it works. You have to make a little bit of noise and let people know that you're there. Right? So um, focus on your uh, demographic. Make sure that your portfolio and all the messages that you put on your website reflect that demographic. And then um, make sure that your marketing is also aimed at the right people. Right. So a lot of times people will do... Um, you know, they'll consider their marketing and they're aiming at the wrong group. You know, um, a lot of artists tend to like to interact with other artists, you know, and so they're, they end up marketing to artists, you know, and so that's, and there's nothing wrong with that if you're, if you're um, selling to artists, but, uh, you know, a lot of people just, you know, they're, they, um, they mistake, um, you know, the, the great feedback that they're getting from their friends and, and stuff. And, and then they say, well, I don't understand why I'm not getting any work. And the reason that they're not getting any work is because the me message is going to the wrong people. Right. So even though they're getting great feedback and stuff, artists rarely buy art from other artists. Right. You know, because uh, it's like trying to it's like trying to sell uh, apples to an apple farmer. You know, they just don't need it. Um, and so. So what we what we want to do is just focus on the correct market, get your message out to that market and let them know that you're available. A lot of artists are shy about promoting their work for some reason. Um, you know, one of the things I recommend for my students, one of the first things I recommend is set up a schedule that you're going to start, you know, getting stuff out there. You know, so um, if you're going to be using social media, um, make sure that, you know, you start being helpful but to other people, but also don't be afraid every once in a while to throw up a, hey, I did this, you know, what do you think kind of thing, you know, and, and let people know that you're out there and that you're available. I, I you know, I, I know that a lot of people caution you, don't, you know, oversell your stuff. Um, but really, honestly, there's no way people are going to see it if you don't promote it, you know. So yeah, how's that for 10 sentences? <laughs> I, I think it was 10 sentence. Like <laughs> yeah, I know I ramble, <laughs> but you know, this yeah. message is, this message is important and I, you know, I want people to hear it. And, and I think it's, you know, for, especially for artists, because there's a lot of frustration out there. 
um, they, you know, people are, they want to do work and they want to get into this field, but they don't understand how to promote themselves. And so if you don't understand that, you're not going to get any work. It's just, you know, it's just, just that simple. It's so competitive right now that if you don't have um, some sort of program set up, then, you know, you're going to wind up being frustrated. I, I think we're winding down here. Is there anything else you want to say to people who are viewing? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know, recently I was on um, I was on a, a website. Uh, I think it was LinkedIn or something like that. You know, and I, and and this this woman had uh, put up a piece of art. She was kind of reaching out. She's saying, "Can you help me? You know, I, I really want to be a children's book artist." And, you know, a lot of people offer tips. And then there was this one tip and it came, I think it was from an agent or it might have been from another artist who had been in the business for a year, for years. And the, and the advice was, um, I'm not, I'm going to tell you something nobody else is going to tell you. And that is, you're never going to make it as a children's book artist. Your work just isn't good enough. And I read that and I was, I had to read it like twice. And I was just like, I, I can't believe that somebody would put that message out there, you know? Um, and so my message is, you know, don't ever let anybody talk you out of your dream, right? If you, if you have something and you want it, you can make that happen. You know, if it, if it's to be a children's book artist, then you can make that happen. You know, um, don't ever let anybody talk you out of it. Um, you know, especially yourself. <laughs> Sometimes I'm my worst enemy, but you know, don't, don't, you know, you're going to get a lot of advice from different people, but just don't ever let anybody talk you out of your dream. I think that's my, that's my word of advice for everybody. Thanks, How's that? Bob. Is that pretty good? <laughs> <laughs> Is that motivational? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I think a lot of artists go through phases where they think they think that they're not gonna get any work, they're not gonna get any jobs because their work just isn't good enough. And yeah. I don't think it actually has to do with whether their work is good enough. I think that's what a lot of artists um, think internally for whatever reason we're, we're very hard on ourselves you know th that's so true and I, I i run into that myself you know I, i've done close to 300 books at this point and i still i, <laughs> I still sit down and, and and talk myself out <laughs> of things you know it's <laughs> you know you think after a while and it'd sink in but yeah that's that's important you know try to try not to be your worst enemy <laughs> <laughs> if you got, if there's one person that should be rooting for you, it should be you, right? <laughs> yeah, be nice to you, right? Yeah, be nice to yourself. Don't be so, don't be so hard on yourself, illustrators. <laughs> it's it's competitive out there, but you can do it. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thank you. I enjoyed it.